Hi, this video is for activity two of the Cell Structure and Function Lab. And this activity looks at osmosis. It looks at which direction water moves either into or out of the cell in an isotonic environment, a hypotonic environment, and a hypertonic environment. So if you don't remember what those terms mean and you don't remember what osmosis means, it's very important to read the introduction to the lab and review your lecture notes before you start because there will be questions that require you to know those terms. So the procedure for this lab is a little complicated. I am going to walk you through it and I'm only going to demonstrate one part of it to you. I'm not going to demonstrate all of it. You all have some basic lab skills at this point and you should be able to carry this out. It's just, you know, walking through this a step at a time is, is a little more complex than some of the activities we've done. Okay, so I'm sharing my screen first and then I'm going to go to the board and talk about things. And I'm also going to show you a couple of things. So really make sure you read all of the steps through, even though I'm going to talk you through them. I think it's really important to read them for yourself, highlight and really know what you're doing before you start because you only have one shot at this. You only have one set of materials for doing this. Having said that, if for some reason you do mess up, you know, you always have your lab partners to rely on, but really let's, we, we only have one set of dialysis tubes. So even though you could possibly get more sugar, you can't get more dialysis tubing. So let's try to make it work right the first time. You really wanna make sure you rinse everything out if you use it for activity one. You don't want iodine interfering with anything that's happening here and you don't want anything else. You wanna make sure that there are just you know, super clean and rinse before we start, including the spoon. You will actually need the spoon. Okay, so now you're going to take two beakers. These are your beakers, and you're going to label one of them 40% and one 20%. And this is where you're going to make your stock sucrose solution that you're going to be using for your extracellular fluid and the fluid inside your cells. And we're going to set up three different scenarios. We're going to set up an isotonic scenario, a hypertonic scenario, and a hypotonic scenario. So the first thing you need to do is prepare these two solutions. I'm going to walk you through how to do that. But if you wanna just read step by step here, I'm going to walk you through it on the board too. But if you wanna look at it here, you can see the steps of how you're going to do that. Okay, so, you're going to label them both, and then you're going to add the contents of one entire package to the 40%. When they say one entire package of the sucrose, they mean this. Okay, so your 40% beaker is going to get one entire package of this. When you do that, when you pour this into here, you're going to note the volume. Okay, so if it goes to the 100 milliliter mark, you're going to write that down because now you want the 20% to be exactly half of that volume. So if this, on this one, your sucrose went to 100, you want it to go to 50 on your 20%. And you'll use your spoon and the sucrose in the second pack to make sure that that's exact. Okay, so you want the 20% to be exactly half of the 40%. Then you're going to add equal amounts of water to each one. And you need to be really exact. You're going to use your graduated cylinder and you're going to use the, the bulb pipette. I'm so sorry, I can't find one. I don't know where mine have gone to, but you're going to use the little squeezy bulb pipettes and you're going to add or remove water until you get exactly to the 100 mil, pour it in. Okay, do 100 more, pour it in, and then do 50. You need exactly 250 mils of water in each one. One of them has twice as much sugar as the other. The other tip I have is that you should try to use warm water because warm water will help the sugar dissolve more rapidly. And if you do use warm water, I would use it in both. The directions suggest doing it only in the 40% beaker. I would just go ahead and do it in both. Stir with the spoon until it's completely dissolved. It should be clear with no undissolved sugar in there. Okay, then you're going to add 10 drops of red food coloring to just the 20% beaker. Now I'm going to quit sharing my screen for a minute so we can go just to the board and I'm gonna walk you through that part again. I know this is really redundant, but I just really wanna make sure that everyone knows what you're doing. Okay, so this is for preparing your sucrose solutions. And 
you're going to have two beakers. One is your 40% and one is your 20%. So first you're going to add your sugar. This is going to be the entire 100 gram sucrose packet goes into the 40%. And only about half of it is going to go in here. But again, you're going to look at the volume and make sure it's exactly half. Okay, then you add your 250 mils of warm water to each one. You stir and dissolve. And then you add your 10 drops of red food coloring just to your 20% beaker and not your 40%. Okay, now what we need to do is set up our experiment. We're going to have three cups. You're going to label them A, B, and C. So you're going to use these cups. And each one is going to be a different situation. One's going to be isotonic, one's going to be hypertonic, one's going to be hypotonic. You'll already know which one is which going into this, but we really want to try to demonstrate which way water is going to move, either into the cell, out of the cell, or into and out at an equal rate, depending on the scenario. So the first thing you're going to do, you're not gonna put the cells in yet, okay? This, this shows them completely set up already. The first thing you're going to do though is in cup A, you're going to add 100 mils of your 20% solution. So you're going to pour it from the beaker into a graduated cylinder and then pour it into the cup. You want to be very precise. Again, using your pipette to add or remove solution until you get to exactly 20 mils, I'm sorry, exactly 100 milliliters of the 20% sucrose solution. Okay, so that'll be red. So I really should have drawn this one red. And same here, this will be red because you're also going to put 100 mils of the 20% in cup B. Okay, in cup C, you're using the 40%, so it won't be red. So 100 mils of the 40%. Again, these don't have the bag in yet, okay? Now you're going to prepare your dialysis bags, which I'm going to show you how to do in a minute. And you're also going to weigh them, but you're not going to weigh them using a scale because we don't have a scale available to use. You would have to weigh these in grams and most of you don't have that in your house. If you do, I'm going to ask you why you have that. <laughs> so we're going to weigh each bag by volume displacement. You're going to be putting water into a graduated cylinder, dropping your pretend cell into it to see how much water is displaced. And you're going to record that as your quote initial weight, but it's really your initial volume displacement. Then you're going to add your cells into each environment, and then you're going to wait for 60 minutes, pull them out, and weigh them again. You'll weigh them again the same exact method using volume displacement, and I will talk about that in more detail too. Okay, let's talk about how to prepare your dialysis bags. The way you're going to prepare your dialysis bags is you have dialysis tubing in this bag. Oops, mine's not in there right now. Okay, it looks like this. It's just this crinkly tape and you should have three pieces of it. You're going to soak that in water. And you can't soak it too long. So you could go ahead and put this in here and have it ready to go. Okay, once you've been soaking it for a period of time, you're going to pull it out and what used to just feel like crinkly tape is now going to, if you scrunch it between your fingers, it's actually going to open up like a tube, which is pretty cool. And once you have this end opened up like a tube, you're going to try to open up the other end too. You actually wanna go along the entire length and open the whole thing up. So you're just gonna keep scrunching it until it becomes a tube all the way down. Okay, and this might take a few minutes to do. <laughs> okay, we don't actually need it this big. At some point, you're going to be trimming some of this off, so make sure you have some scissors around to do that. It doesn't say to do that in the instructions, but I'm just assuming you're going to have to. Okay, at one end, at one end of this tube, we're going to either tie it in a knot or we're going to use the clips that are provided. You could also use dental floss. That's what we do in the lab at school is we use dental floss to tie one end. Okay, this isn't as easy as I thought it was going to be. Okay, once you get the entire thing open, and actually you probably just need the two ends really the most open. 
you're going to pick one end to tie first. So I'm going to use the tie method on mine. So I'm just going to twist it, twist it, and then I'm actually going to tie the ends. If you are going to use the tie method, you definitely don't want to trim it initially. You'll trim it at the end. If you don't want to use the tie method, then you can use the clips. If you do tie it, make sure you pull really, really tight and make sure that's really secure. Okay, your other option is to use these little clips that are provided and you would put that on the end and clip it. There's also nothing wrong with doing both. Then you really know your bag's not leaking. If your bag leaks, the experiment's gonna get wrecked. Oops. Okay, sorry. <laughs> okay, here it is. Now what I'm going to do is I'm preparing bag A. So bag A needs 20% and I need 10 mils of it. So I'm going to go back to my beaker that has the 20% solution. It's going to be red, and I'm just using water for demonstration right now, so mine's not red. But you're going to very carefully from your tiny, little, adorable, graduated cylinder, this is kind of tough to do, but you want to kind of wrap the tubing around the mouth and then slowly, carefully pour it in. Okay, and then you have some tubing left. And gosh, you know what? I'm wrong. You might not need to trim this. This is actually more full than I thought. You're going to twist it until you've really twisted down to the level of the water. So it should be, this is a, you know, we're making a little mock cell here. So you want to get it all the way tight. And now you have two choices. You can either tie it or, you know, on this end, it might just be easier to use the clip. But twist, twist, twist. You could tie it and use the clip. You just really want to make sure it's very secure. If you use the clip and you didn't tie it, make sure you move the clip down and you really make sure that you don't have a whole lot of space in there. Okay, so this is now our bag with our 20% solution and it's going to go in the 20% cup, but I don't do that yet. I have to use the method of volume displacement now to determine what we're gonna call the initial weight of this cell. Okay, so to do that, let me share my screen with you. Okay, so we're going to weigh, <laughs> again, um, using volume displacement. So we're going to add 80 milliliters of water to our 100 milliliter graduated cylinder. So this is the 100 milliliter graduated cylinder that's in your general equipment bag. And by the way, when you're not using um, your cell, you're gonna put them in the weighing boat. There are three little weighing boats and you'll use those to store your cells. You might even wanna label these A, B, and C so you don't get them mixed up. So I need 80 milliliters of water And you need to be very precise on this. So again, you would, if you were really doing this, you would want to use your pipette and make sure you're right at 80. And then you're going to add the cell and calculate the volume of water that it displaces. Okay, so I'm right at 80. So I need to go a little bit above 80, and I want to look at the meniscus, and now I'm right at 80 on the meniscus. Okay, now I'm going to drop my cell in. And it takes me to 92 milliliters. So 92 minus 80, that means 12 milliliters was my initial displacement. So this is the concept here. If I started with 150 milliliters, and once I put this rock in, it goes to 180, 180 minus 150 gives me 30 milliliters of water displaced. So that's how we're going to weigh each of our cells. So you're gonna take the starting weight of each of your cells using this method. Okay. I'm Going to just go back quickly to the lab exercise. 
Okay, so we made it through this step. We've now, we've made our first cell. Now we need to make our second cell. Our second cell is actually going to have the 40%. So that's going to be the one that's not red. Okay, and then our third one is going to be another one with the 20%. So you're gonna be making two cells with the 20% and a third cell with the 40%. Then you just really need to make sure you set this up the correct way. So you've made all of your little cells. You're going to drop them into each of the correct cups for one hour. And then when you pull them out, you're going to weigh them again. I'm going to show you the data in a minute, but I just want to stop sharing my screen and just make sure one more time that we just go through these steps. Okay, so we prepared three dialysis bags, two with 20% solution. So two of them will be red inside and one will be with the 40% solution. We kept them separate from each other, but we also know that the two 20% ones are red. Okay, but we really want to make sure that we record the weight of this one correctly and make sure that that's the one that goes in cup A. We wanna keep these two separate because the weight change is going to be important. Please don't get those two bags mixed up. You wanna record the initial weight of each one again, that's the, the amount of water displays. So you're not really recording weight, you're really recording milliliters of water that's displaced. Now you're gonna add the cells to the beakers, you're gonna wait 60 minutes, and then you're going to pull them out and you're going to take your final weight again by volume displacement and you're going to record that. Okay, those are the steps for the procedure. Now let's talk about the questions. Okay, so gosh, you know, I really hate how they've done these <laughs> tables. They get cut off. So you had your 20% and 20%, your 40 and 20 and your 20 and 40. So cups A, B and C. You've recorded your initial volume, your final volume, and your change in volume. Now, when they say initial volume and final volume, they don't mean 80 mils and then 92 mils gave us 12 or whatever we calculated before. Um, when they say initial volume, they want the 12. And then final volume means at the end of the experiment, when you pull this bag out and did it again, what was the final volume? So then you're gonna look at your change in volume your percent change in volume, and if it lost weight, that should actually be a negative number. Now, this is not actual data, this is made up, so your results might differ. But if the bag actually loses weight, if the, if the final volume is lower, you should actually have a negative number. Okay, now this is very important, this last column that you can't see right now, so let me try to fix this so you can see it. <laughs> God. Er, this is so frustrating. Okay, is the cell environment hypotonic, isotonic, or hypertonic? So this column's worth the most points. Please answer it based on the environment of the cell, the ECF, not the inside of the cell. I'm sorry, it's hard to read here, but hopefully the lab that you will have posted on Canvas, that's going to be more clear so you can actually see it. Okay, now this question is very important. Explain what the change in volume of the dialysis tube indicated. Describe what happened to the cell when the volume increased and when the volume decreased. Okay, in other words, did water move into the cell or out of the cell? So right here it says the change in volume is due to a loss or gain of water due to osmosis. When the volume increased, the net flow of water was from the cup into the dialysis tubing. When the volume decreased, the net flow of water was out of the tubing into the cup. In other words, into the cell or out of the cell. And you want to explain that in your answer. Okay, so for this activity too, the most points are accurately identifying isotonic, hypotonic, and hypertonic in this last column and then very thoroughly explaining what happened in question number three. Okay, that's it for activity two, thanks.